Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Dells Chamber Community Affairs. This is where we have this forum and this space that we can uh, hear from different people, organizations that affect our community. And of course, all of those in the legislation do that directly. Uh, today, our guest is Oregon Representative Jeff Helfrich. Uh, we will bring him here and uh, let him do some talking questions and all of that. But first, let's go around the room so that he knows who's in the room um, during this discussion. I'll call you out your name. I would like your name and your organization. And if you promise to keep it 20 seconds or less, you can let me know what's happening with your organization or an event that's coming up just so that we're all informed as this group. The other great way to do that is drop any information or links into the chat box. I see that Dan is already utilizing that. Uh, he has put up the forums that are open and for the public uh, for our new candidates for the college president uh, that's in that process of searching for that specific a uh, person who is going to be a fit for the college and a fit for them. So you can see when they're available at both the Dallas or the Hood River campus uh, to stay engaged on that piece of it. Sorry if I stole your thunder, Dan. Um, not sorry. Um, anyway, let's start with Matthew Cole and I will call out your name as we go around. Matt Cole, Direct Line IT, not a lot going on with us. So I'm just glad to be here. Great. Phil Brady. Hello, Phil Brady, Wasco County Commissioner. In 20 seconds, I'll just give you some inside information that Wasco County government is moving. We're going to stay in Wasco County, we're going to stay in the Dallas, but move from the courthouse and other dispersed locations into the Gobi Building. We've put in an offer, and Gobi Building folks are talking, are going to consider our offer today. So more news coming, but that's a scoop. Great. I know where to find you all after that. That's the idea. Stop. Yeah, Scott McKay. Good morning, everyone. Scott McKay. Um, I'm the community liaison for Circles of Care that connects older adults with volunteers to provide support so they can stay in their homes. And we're both operating both the Dalles and Hood River. And Hood River used to be the volunteers in action, but Circles of Care is the one who's now doing it. Thank you. Dave Peters. Good morning, everybody. Dave Peters, Columbia Cascade Housing, the Columbia Housing Authority. Uh, just a quick update on our down payment. We've already given out or promised probably almost a third of the funding. Just a reminder, we do have a set aside for veterans, and that can be stacked on some others. So a veteran could get as much as $120,000 in down, down payment funds with a maximum of 20% of the purchase price as an overriding rule. But anyway, send any veterans that are interested in home ownership our way. And yes, I have been in contact and will be in contact with the veteran services offices. Thanks. What did you know that was my next question? <laughs> All right, Travis Dre. Uh, good morning, Travis Dre, Director of Business Development for Mid-Columbia Medical Center. On June 1st, a joint memo went out from our CEO and President Dennis Knox and Joyce Newmeyer, the president of the Oregon Health Network. We closed our deal with Adventist Health on June 1st. The ink went on the contract. So we sent out an internal memo to all of our physicians and staff to let them know first. I'm going to put an invitation into the uh, chat box. We're going to mark this iconic uh, milestone in MCMC's history. New name, new logo unveiling on Wednesday, June 14th from 12 p.m. to 3 p.m. Uh, all of you, your colleagues are invited to attend. We'll have uh, some ceremonial speeches starting at 1230. Music, uh, food from Bustos Barbecue and Cobblestone Catering. Um, so please stop by. Please join us. It'd be great to see you all and um, and meet our new colleagues with Adventist Health. They're bringing in about 100 folks from Tillamook, Portland, and Roseville, California. So um, it's done. It's finally here. The journey has closed and the new adventure begins. Okay, tell, say June 14th, what time again? 12 p.m. to 3 p.m. And I'll put the invite in the chat. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Dan Spots. Writing that down. Thank you, Lisa. Dan Spots, Columbia Gorge Community College. Uh, thank you. We, yep, ex exactly. You are all invited to the um, to meet the potential candidates. Uh, that is going to be in room 3103. That's the Health Sciences Building, the uh, the newer building on the uh, the Dallas campus. Um, my appreciation to Representative Helfrich, to Natalie, for all of your help, your work in getting SB 482 to the governor's desk. That is 
uh, going to allow the uh, state of Oregon to support aviation maintenance training taking place at Columbia Gorge Regional Airport. And that would not have been happening without our legislative uh, uh, supporters doing uh, a wonderful job in Salem for us. Thank you, Senator Bonham, sponsored Representative Helfrich, took it across the line. Appreciation to you both. Yep. Uh, Sally Johnson. Oh, there it goes. <laughs> Hi, thanks, Lisa. Hi, everybody. Sally Johnson, the Dallas Art Center, and I've just popped two things into the chat. We actually have an art opening tonight. It's a small works uh, show. This is a jury show. It's a really cool show representing interesting um, artists from the region. And then I've started hosting artist talks. And next Thursday, I'm doing one of the talks. We're calling it Small Talks. And it's with uh, Louise Palermo, who is the juror of the show. I'm gonna interview her about how she shaped the show as well as a few of the artists there. And um, it's those talks have been popular and really fun. So hope to see you there. Thanks so much. Thank you. Rob Garrett. Good morning, everybody. This is Rob Garrett, Mid-Columbia Senior Center. Our biggest thing this month is gonna be our summer bazaar. It's gonna be a carnival atmosphere. It's a parking lot sale, if you will. Uh, we're going to have this time, we're going to have, besides the food that we normally have, we're also going to have live music in the parking lot outside from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. These are the people who particularly normally would play at 11 a.m. in the morning. These are our, our house musicians, if you will. So come out, bring your wallet, buy a few things, listen to some music, have some food, and enjoy the time. Thank you, guys. Green Goodwin. Uh, Brain Goodwin, Columbia Gorge Food Bank. Uh, no major updates for today. Thank you and welcome. Thank you. Casey Cook. Hi, uh, Casey with Casey Business Solutions. And I guess my biggest project I'm working on right now is the Fort Dallas 4th of July. So definitely hop on over to Facebook, um, follow the page. I'll put the link in the chat actually, make it easy. But whole slew of events the entire day starting from seven in the morning all the way up till 10 o'clock at night is the big show. And just on a plug for that, Casey, you're the first one to know. I talked to Fox 12 yesterday and we pitched to a reporter. So we may have their team out here participating during the day and doing our fireworks. Wonderful. I have actually been interacting with their media and a couple other media outlets pages as well, just to try to get on their radar subconsciously. So, so that's uh, great. Yeah, a reporter came yesterday. So we had a long chat about all the fun things. So they are pitching it to the producer and seeing if they can come out for the day. So I'll keep you guys posted. Thank you so much, Lisa. We'll take it any way we can. So I believe, oh, Natalie. Hi, I'm Natalie Newgard. I'm Rep Helfrich's uh, chief of staff. And then my daughter Lily is joining us since it's an early morning call and she's not at grandma's yet. <laughs> uh -huh. Well, good morning. All right, did I get everybody or did I miss somebody? Because every time someone talks, the squares move. So it's always fun on my side. All right, with that, Jeff, I wanna welcome you and I appreciate you taking time out to be here for our community. This is a small group, but they're a mighty group um, and they have great connections throughout our communities, um, not just the Dells. So with that, I'm gonna let you do uh, introduce yourself let us know what the updates are, and then we will do a Q&A, as uh, Jeff mentioned. And with that, I will watch hands being raised. I will watch the chat if you're uh, easier to put a question in there, and I'll make sure that the question gets asked um, if you are not able to ask that from where you are with your system. So with that, Jeff, good morning and welcome. Hey, good morning. I appreciate you uh, inviting me to be here. And it's uh... Unfortunately, uh, the drive is about a two, two hour, two and a half hour drive uh, from here to the Dallas. So I'd love to come there and be in person. However, it's a, it's a long drive and it's a trek. So I stay in Salem uh, during the week. And I want to say, I think Natalie's uh, executive assistant sitting there, she's going to take good notes for it. So it'll be good to get Lily involved in this. Uh, so for those who don't know, Jeff Helfrich, state rep, I've uh, been here. It's my second go around in Salem. But my committees are, I'm the vice chair of housing and homelessness semiconductors, transportation, joint transportation, 
and joint ways and means public safety. And so I'm going to give you more of a global picture of what's been kind of going on in Salem. We have, uh, we just passed the budget through uh, the public safety ways and means, which is for OSPs fully funding their budget. And that's a big, big, app. it was a big uh, push to get that done. But what that does, because the Dallas sits right on I-84 and the that has a lot of impact uh, visitors, but also drunk drivers and trying to get troopers out there on the road. They are having a little trouble, not so much recruiting new troopers, but they're having trouble getting them in the academy. And so one of the bills I was able to really uh, work over and work over the committee and other people uh, was Phil Castle is the new director at uh, DPSST, which is the police academy. It's just not the police academy. It's encompassing dispatchers, corrections, fire. There's a lot of uh, training that goes on there. It's a beautiful campus here in Salem. They saw the backlog, and they I was watching the curve that they're, they're giving the um, – they're briefing on how much backlog is there and how it's just exponentially growing. And so they came up with a creative solution. Normally a class size is 40 officers in a basic police class. They're going to push it to 60 and it doesn't change or uh, dilute the training, but what it does is it adds like the uh, best way to describe it, it's an afternoon shift where they'll take that extra 20 officers and be able to plug them in the firearms, the driving, the defensive tactics. And then they'll get together as a group of 60 in a, a lecture hall to go over law class and other type of academic type things where it's just an academic setting. And so I think that's going to really help recruiting around the state, help public safety, because we keep hearing about our officers uh, not having enough officers and uh, recruiting. And what's basically happening is people are getting recruited, they get hired, but then they don't have a slot to go to and they're sitting around not being a police officer and they find another job somewhere else. Most, most of the time it's out of state. And so that is going to really help take care of that backlog. It's, it's a pilot project. I am on a push to make it a permanent, but they need more facilities and everything, but they're able to get it done with what we have now without spending a bunch of extra money, which is important because there's a lot of other projects we have to fund. That's the that's kind of the bigger global picture. Still working on the uh, Hood River Bridge. I know it doesn't impact as much there in the Dalles, but if the Dalles Bridge is closed, you have had to go over to the Hood River Bridge to go up and around or go all the way down to Arlington and go across that way. And so that uh, funding package is getting pushed through. I'm working uh, to see if we're going to be able to get the funding for that, the match dollars that will match with Washington, and then we can access the federal dollars. I've been working with Senator Merkley's office quite a bit on getting ready to do that and have that jump off to go uh, make sure those we can be first in line with that. The other part of that bridge project is the Bridge of the Gods and Cascade Locks. That's six million on our side, six million on the Washington side. That's going to be seismic upgrades, but then they are going to go for extra dollars, an infrastructure package where they're going to put out a cantilever uh, side of the bridge for pedestrian and for um, uh, bicycle traffic uh, back and forth with the uh, Pacific Crest Trail. It's a it's an important thing. Be able to widen it just a little bit. And then the other part of that bridge package is the Burnside Bridge. It really doesn't affect the district, but because I touched Multnomah County, they wanted to jump on this package because I don't think they felt they could get their bridge funded any other way because I was having pretty good progress. So that's that's there. Dan touched on it a little bit, the Senate bill. And what people didn't understand in Salem when you hear the Dallas Regional Airport, they didn't realize you there's a doubt the airport's actually in Washington State, that Washington State granted uh, the state of Oregon uh, that uh, land there in the airport. And so it's it's a kind of unique situation. And Dan and I worked together quite a few a couple of years ago about uh, the airplane mechanics and power plant uh, opportunity there to train people up. So this is an economic driver, right? So you can get uh, adults coming out of the military or other adults that already had careers or been looking for something different and get them trained up to be airplane mechanics and be a really good uh, family wage job. And so we had to create a law to allow those credits and dollars to be used across the state so a, a college in Oregon could benefit, they could count those credits. And so it was a little bit of a push in trying to educate people on that, but it was a big deal to get that done, and I'm, I'm proud of that. We had our town hall on Friday, um, range of questions from veterans issues to uh, funding for different projects. And it was just kind of centered around, a lot of it was schools and uh, how we're funding those, and we uh, have we just passed the budget for the schools. It wasn't as much as we were hoping for. We were trying to get 10.4 billion to the schools, so they had enough and they could move it forward. Uh, they got scaled back by the powers to be, and it's at 10.2 billion. That I think is going to make a difference. It's going to help, but still, it's still left a little bit to be desired. And I, I have really advocated to let's fully fund our schools. If we're going to keep talking about our schools need the money, let's get that done first, and then figure out how we fund other things. 
the semiconductors that is potentially can help the DAOs and potentially help other places because it's manufacturing and using that as a blueprint to bring businesses into Oregon. So I'm trying to make that more of a blueprint. So it's just not the semiconductor fields because there's three places in the world that does the R and D that we do here in Oregon. You have Oregon, Taiwan, and you have a place in Europe. That's it. And we've kind of, the Intel's kind of sit on their laurels thinking it was going to keep happening and it, it placed the stuff went to different places. Oregon hasn't been really business friendly in the sense um, and with the corporate activities tax and other things. And so really trying to pare those things down and make, show that we're open for business and show that there's certainty in the market here. Cause if there's uncertainty in this market, people aren't going to want to invest. And then I think the other, uh, some of the other stuff we talked about housing as a vice chair, we pushed out that 2001 early on for the homeless package. I am still hopeful we can push across the finish line house bill 3414, which is the governor's bill which allows for variances, but also includes land supply. And I know we're kind of hemmed in in the Dalles and in Hood River, and obviously just the whole district's part of the National Scenic Area. I think I'm there's only one other representative that has part of the National Scenic Area, and that's Greg Smith, and it's just a sliver, and I've got most of it. So it's kind of difficult to work within that for that, that land use, but the rest of the state really needs to open up some of this uh, the urban growth boundaries into this out of their reserves, the urban reserves. And so trying to get that uh, across the finish line too. And we'll see if we're able to get that. Uh, I know the Senate's in negotiations, uh, trying to get this, uh, the other senators back. That's that's a conversation for Senator Bonham to talk about. Uh, that's more his wheelhouse. Even though we're roommates, I'm really focused on the House, showing up, getting our votes done, getting things taken care of. So with that, uh, we can take some questions real quick from the audience, uh, if you have any questions. If I can't answer them, I know uh, Natalie will be taking notes and we can get back to you and uh, follow up with those answers if I don't have them off the top of my head. Um, I'm gonna bring up, you, you mentioned it, but where are we? I tried to read and decipher through all the language the other day for the CAT tax. I know that there was efforts to move the CAP um, but I also saw that there was raised percentages when they were moving that. So can you tell me where we landed or if it's final? It's not final yet. It's still a work in progress. Okay. I, the hope is to push it up. Uh, the percentage is up. I just, I don't know where they're going to land at that. And that's, that's sitting in uh, tax and revenue right now. Okay. That is something I would like to be kept up to date on if I, if possible. So who's my best person to be looking at that for? We, so Representative Reschke is our tax policy guru, uh, but we can connect with his office to see where stuff is at and kind of get you, get okay. you where the progress is at on that. I have so businesses that, on that. I have businesses right on that line that are making right. that much but their expenses are right up there so they don't have much margin. So we're really watching this to see how that's going to affect them. Yeah. And it's, it's, I think the cost driver is inflation right now and that inflation cost drivers pushing everything up. And so you're, you're charging more, selling more at a higher price. And so that, that bumps into that, that uh, lower threshold and it's not good for small businesses. And that, I mean, I understand why the cat tax, they came up with it. I don't agree with it, but we have to, I think we have to really go back and look at that and make sure it's not hurting our small businesses because, that's the backbone of our community. It really is. It is. And believe it or not, it's our car dealers that are being affected hugely uh, because of the revenues, but then the expenses, and that puts them into that next threshold, but they're still small businesses. So um, I'm, yeah, but thank you. I appreciate that. So I think the other, the other thing I want to mention is I had a conversation when I was in the Dalles um, after the, the town hall talked to two um, businesses there. One was a car dealership. The other one is Fun Country. And their experiences in loss and theft, um, Mike Erland was telling me that his company over the last year has lost over $50,000 in, in theft. And yep. then the business also across the street from him or backs up to it, uh, Schultons, they lost around $90,000 in the catalytic converters. And so the catch and release policies aren't working. And, you know, we can talk about measure 110 and how that has really affected society and the drug use and decriminalizing drugs. I am a staunch opponent of 110. We need to have the treatments. But we also have to have some um, accountability with that. And we're not seeing that. And there was an article that came out in the Oregonian that talked about how the measure 110 is failing and how nobody's utilizing the resources because they don't have to. There's no motivation for them to do that. And so 
we have to go back and revisit that. You know, that, that comes down to the local uh, level. The uh, DAs will say we can't prosecute the cases. We don't have enough resources. Well, no, there's resources coming. You're going to have enough resources to pay for your deputy district attorneys, and you're going to need to prosecute crimes. And then they'll fall back. Well, we don't have the defense attorneys to, to help defend these defendants. Yes, there's a package that just got passed. And so there's all the excuses that people are coming up with. They're going to be taken care of. And now people need to go do their job. That's just I, I'm, I'm kind of fired up about that one because being in law enforcement for as long as I was, I, I saw where I, I know how to fix the problem, but people think they know better. And so we got to have a bigger conversation about some of this stuff to, ha- to get it across the finish line and to have our community safe again. And people feel like they want to live there and, and stay there. Thank you. All right, Dan Spots. Thank you, Lisa. Uh, one of the things, uh, uh, Representative, that as you know, that we're trying to do in the uh, in the Dallas is establish a uh, affordable public child care center. And I know that uh, there was there were resources identified through HB 3005, I believe, was the uh, legislation. And just uh, whether that or in broader terms, where we stand in terms of uh, providing uh, uh, state support for the at least the construction or renovation, in our case, of facilities to uh, uh, provide affordable childcare, rural Oregon being a childcare desert, uh, practically no spaces available sometimes. You queued that right up for me. So yesterday I spoke on the house floor, 2314 or 16, which I can't remember which one it was, but it basically was allowing grant funding for uh, for this particular project or these projects like this and people to open those businesses. And then I also was chief co-sponsor on another bill to allow that landlords couldn't deny uh, people if they wanted to have childcare uh, facilities within their rental property, they had to meet certain requirements. So we're, we're taking uh, chunks and bites away at that to, to help solve that. So I'm not sure where 3005 is at, but I do know the, um, the uh, Department of Human Health, I'm going to get it wrong. So I'll, I'll get back to you where it's at. But I, I spoke it on the House floor yesterday. And so it, the money's coming. It's going to take a couple, you know, it's going to get signed. It's, it's, it's declared emergency. And so it's going to be, I think it's signed upon passage after 90 days, but it, it, there's going to be some funding out there to get those projects going. Thank so you. I looked up 3005. It passed out of Ways and Means yesterday. Um, so that means it should be coming to us on the House floor. Uh, I, I think we're expecting Tuesday of next week. Natalie, thank you. Yeah. Uh, but then obviously the big issue is it goes to the Senate after that. So that's the giant question mark right now, but I do expect it on the House floor early next week. Good to know. Representative Natalie, thank you very much for your support on those issues. July 11th, Natalie, is that's on your calendar. We'll be having a legislative uh, field staff tour in the Dallas and at the regional airport. And uh, that child care center will be one of the stops on the tour. Um, potential child care center. We hope to get there. Thank you very much. That's very, very encouraging to hear. I appreciate that. Thank you. Bill Brady. Thank you, Representative Helfrich, for joining us. A couple uh, bills I'm tracking. One, as I'm going around South County, people keep asking, when do we get broadband? And it won't be soon, but I think it's uh, Bill 3201 that would help us align our standards with the FAA so that we can take advantage of federal money that would be coming our way. Do you have any where any thoughts on where that's where that's heading? I like I, I'm sitting in my car, so I don't have my computer to do both to look that up. But Natalie, uh, Natalie could be able to pull that up and get us something in the yeah. chat for you. That nope. one is waiting on the Senate. So uh, it passed out of the House. It's just sitting on the Senate floor waiting on a vote. So uh, again, a giant question mark with whatever the Senate decides to do. I, I understand. The other one is, uh, Natalie, you can start looking at this House Bill 2506. This is regarding residential care centers. Else, put, put in the plug here. I, I believe, uh, Representative Helvet, did you voted against this in committee? Um, and I'd be interested in your thinking about it. Uh, from our Sheriff McGill is working very hard to put together a resolution center, and the spot, spot we spot we have spot we have for it is on some county land on Tenth Street, where, where the county yard is sitting there, empty building, kind of waiting to be to fall down and become something better for their community. So uh, um, what we need is that siting authority to make this move ahead, and then we'll have a very comprehensive houselessness system with uh, an annex for people who recently become houseless, but still are you know, capable and 
and functional people in society, a, uh, a, a navigation center for people with disabilities because of mental and drug addiction. And then for those who get, become involved, deeply involved and end up interacting with the uh, law enforcement, this nav uh, resolution center so we can deal with the aid and assist issues and get them directed in the right ways. So that went to rules to sit there. The biggest part of that was there's a lot of calls to the office about um, sex offenders being these, these locations being cited within X amount of feet of schools and playgrounds. And that's that's a that's an important thing for a lot of families to understand that you could have a sex offender living right next to you and uh, or living right next to a school and having access to potential victims. And so the conversation revolved around a thousand feet from a school to have one of these places cited. And with that said, that thousand feet came basically from what uh, the laws for marijuana sales and distribution centers. So you can only you couldn't have a distribution or sales center within a thousand feet of a school, so that's that's kind of where that that landed at. I don't think it's going to come out of rules uh, with anything right now. So there's no prohibition on what you guys are trying to do. That just that just what people were concerned about is in their neighborhood having you know a, a lockdown facility or having a facility where you could potentially have sex offenders. And what are you going to do with that and where they're going to be at? And so those are the legitimate concerns of the community members, and it's not NIMBYism. It's a legitimate concern of being next to a school. So that's that's where it sits. So if if there was all these prohibitions in there that may affect the navigation or the center you're talking about, but as it stands right now, it is it's a it's a county siting issue. It's no longer it's not a state issue. Yeah, uh, there's a little contradiction between um, people being on the street and a lockdown facility. So this this was a lockdown facility, and also in the Dells. We don't have very many places to move. We are we are locked in, by this, so we don't have to, that that thousand foot becomes yeah something sounds good, but in reality, um, it's people are on the street anyway. Okay, all right. Well, I'll keep track of it and look at it again. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. All right. Any other questions? I know you have them. Take another gulp of coffee. I guess that's my cue. Nobody's got anything. <laughs> uh, uh, so um, what do you have for us? You, you know, uh, Natalie's touched on it. and it's There's negotiations for the Senate coming back. I'm hopeful. There's going to be, uh, I believe, the negotiations. I have no inside information, but I, the, what's being discussed is bills that have bipartisan support, budget bills, um, and then it's going to be probably a fast and furious last part of the session. If that doesn't happen, we'll be called back for special session. And that's already been declared. It just the, that then has to negotiate what bills will be talked about, where they're at. There is a continuing resolution right now that goes till September. That continuing resolution will keep everything funded so the state just doesn't come to a grinding halt. Money's still there, money's still going to be distributed. Uh, but I, I firmly believe, I, I hold hope that we'll see, um, we'll know something probably later this week or early next week and what the rest of the session looks like. And so that that's the best I've got. I'm working hard and trying to get to some stuff done. There's a lot of bills that I have uh, interest in that are sitting over on the Senate side that if we get a, a list of bills together that there's bipartisan support, we can get some stuff done. And then, you know, we come back for short session or even the special session, then in the short session. So that's that's kind of where things are sitting at. I'm, I'm still hopeful. We got We've done a lot of good work, and the way the news media portrays stuff that it's just this grinding thing. It's we we're on the House floor every day. I'm talking to my fellow Demo uh, Democratic colleagues on the other side of the aisle. They come over to my desk. We get a lot of stuff done, but there's just some controversial bills that we are different on. And if we kept if we didn't deal with it, if we didn't have two subjects that always came up, we'd have a lot more work and a lot more stuff in common to get done. And that's that's been my approach, and that's why I've got a lot of stuff uh, accomplished this session that I'm proud of. Is there something that we should be watching um, for small businesses, medium or large, that we may not be aware of or could be a surprise or a detriment to our businesses? Um, again, the, everything's sitting in revenue. And so I, I don't know. I can get back to you. I'll talk to Rashki, see if there's something on the horizon that looks like it's going to be bad for small businesses and get back to you on that. I just, I just like I said, in my car, not next to my computer. Yeah. So it's a little bit tough oh, yeah. to kind of work through that. Okay, I put um, in the chat earlier um, the link to the um, joint com joint tax expenditures committee. Um, okay. There's 
they're looking to pass their big omnibus bill this afternoon. So they have a public hearing on the bill at about a half an hour at 8 a.m. And then this afternoon at three, they're going to pass their big tax bill. Um, and I know some of the things that are expected to be included in that bill are um, uh, changes to the CAT, um, an R&D tax credit, um, changes to the enterprise zone. So there's like a whole bunch of stuff that's going to be in that bill. Um, there was an amendment that just dropped at like midnight last night. So it's a very kind of fast and furious at the last minute. But um, I did include the link to that committee. So public hearing in a half an hour and then the vote this afternoon. Natalie, thank you so much. I already grabbed that now. So I appreciate that. Absolutely. Uh, any other questions from you? Um, this is your opportunity to really put them out there in front of Jeff and Natalie uh, and with Lily. She's a great assistant, by the way. Um, so this is your chance. Uh, any other questions, maybe not even pertaining to what's happening in Salem right now, but future or past? Um. They're thinking. No, I got this chance. I just want to say, you know, this, my office does not run on its own. Natalie does a tremendous job and she really helps keep the uh, train on the tracks for me because I'll disappear in the building, start, you know, building relationships. So all that said, uh, Natalie does take care of a lot of stuff for me and Lily, our new executive assistant, I got to figure out a bonus for her. I'm not sure where it's at. And then we got another uh, a person in the office, Drew Draper, that really helps with stuff. So yeah. big shout out to her. We're getting right across the finish line because it's been fast and furious for the last six months. Yes, we all have that team that makes us look good. Yes. Um, all right, so uh, Natalie just put uh, Jeff's email in the chat box along with hers if you guys wanted to grab that so that you can stay in touch and stay connected. Uh, we also have it in our office and in our, e uh, our newsletter, uh, making sure that you guys can connect with your legislators and if you guys don't have any more questions, I'm actually gonna give Jeff a few moments to breathe. Um, and along with us, uh, we always like the gift of time. It doesn't come very often. And uh, just remind everybody that our community calendar is loaded with events put on by our businesses and, and it's a great way to support local. Uh, so check those out on tdcommunitycalendar.com. And I'm sure you'll keep busy. And I just appreciate all of you guys here today. If you need anything, uh, let me know at the office. We have a team here ready to serve you. And uh, thank you all for being here. I really appreciate it. Again, thank you, Jeff. And thank you, Natalie, yep. for taking time out to be here for us. Uh, enjoy being here. I appreciate it so much. Thank you. All right. Thanks, everyone. And go and enjoy that extra 25 minutes.